All right, so now it is time to begin our review with sequences and series. Okay, this is the part one video on just sequences. We're going to just be talking about the definition of, you know, what a sequence actually is. As you can see, that's right up on the board here. And we'll also be talking about the formula for sequences. Okay, so recall what a sequence actually is. Re remember that a sequence is different from a series. A sequence, here, here, here's an example. Okay, a sequence is something like this. One comma three, sorry, one comma two comma three comma four comma five. Okay, it is a comma separated list of terms. So yeah, that's what a sequence is. But in calculus two, we deal with infinite sequences. And here is an example of an infinite sequence. Okay, so you can see here that this sequence goes on and on and on. So next you would have six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, and, and so on and so forth. Okay, now we can also represent this is as the sequence of a sub one, a sub two, a sub three, a sub four, on and on, a sub n, and on from there, okay? This is kind of the, the general form of an infinite sequence, okay? So this a sub one could be anything, and that a sub one means your first term. The a sub two means your second term. A sub three means your third term, which in this case happens to be three. So we could say in this case, a sub three equals three, okay? A sub four equals four, and so on. Now this a sub n here, that's just some term, okay? And uh, that has a bunch of different uses that you're going to see here in just a second. Now we can write a formula for a sequence, okay? So right there, right down below, you are seeing a written out sequence. But we can compact this by just making a formula for the sequence. And that's that a sub n, which is just some term, okay? is equal to n over n plus one. Now you can plug in different n's to find different terms, okay? So if you plugged in one for n, you're dealing with the first term, you're dealing with a sub one. Okay, so let, let's write out this sequence and see a little bit more about you know what we're talking about, just to kind of refresh your mind here. Well, a sub one, okay? That's just going to be plugging in a one for n and that's gonna be one half. Okay, cool, you get a one half here. Let's plug in a two for a, or sorry, two for n. We get a sub two equals a two over three. Okay, that's our next term. And you can see this kind of pattern that you're already, already seeing already where your numerator is just going up by one and your denominator is one more than that. Okay, so a sub three is going to equal three over four. A sub four is gonna equal four over five and so on and so on. Okay, so you're gonna get something like this. Now, remember how I said a sub one, a sub two, a sub three, a sub four, and then dot, 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 a sub n. Well, our a sub n here is n over n plus one. So say we wanted to find the seventh term or something like that. Well, we can just plug in a seven for n here and figure out what that seventh term is going to be. We would get seven over eight, and that's gonna be our a sub seven. Okay, so seeing that n over n plus one there, definitely can help out quite a bit. All right, so we're gonna do some examples of just seeing a written out sequence, and then we're gonna get a formula out of that, okay? Now here we have our first written out sequence up on the board here, and that is negative two, one, negative one half, one fourth, negative one eighth. Okay, so to start off here, to, to get our formula out of this written out sequence, what we're gonna need to do is, is first look at the negatives. You see that these negatives are alternating, okay? And it's important to see whether these negatives are going to be on the odd terms or the even terms, okay? Now, this is on the, you can see the negative is on the odd terms, okay? One, three, and five, okay? What that means is that instead of putting a negative one to the n minus one, because that will make all even terms negative, we're gonna have a negative one to the n, which will make all odd terms positive, okay? 
Now, sadly, the negative one to the n is not the only thing we're going to be dealing with here. We also have to deal with, well, you see that we have different numbers in each term, right? We have a 2, a 4, and an 8. And you can kind of tell, well, this is 2 to the first power, this is 2 to the second power, and this is 2 to the third power. So you start to see a theme here, okay? So you can also say, uh, this can also work, this is a 2 to the, well, this is the same thing as 1 over 2 to the negative 1, okay? And this is the same thing as 1 over 2 to the 0. So now you see here, well, you can see an easy pattern here. Our, our power is increasing by 1 every single time, but it's starting at negative 1 and not 1. So what we do here, okay, is we have a, this is going to be over 2, and it's going to be to the n, but not just the n, because if it started off at the n, then we'd be starting at this third term here with 2 to the first power, right? Because our n starts at 1. So what we're going to have to do is subtract 2. That way we get that 2 to the negative 1 power, and we end up with our sequence right here, okay? Negative 1 to the n, which is making all our odd terms negative, and then this 2 to the n minus 2, which is giving us these 2 to a power on the bottom. Okay, let's look at our next sequence here. We have 5, comma, negative 7 thirds, 1, negative 11 over 27, and 13 over 81. Now, this one may be a little less obvious to kind of see what's going on right away. So, we're going to take this step by step. Let's start off with the negatives. Okay, that's a good place to start when you're looking at trying to make a formula for a sequence. Okay, let's start off with the negatives. Well, we see that every even term is negative and every uh, odd term is negative. Positive. So we're going to start off with a negative 1 to the n minus 1. All right, that makes all even terms negative. Now, the next thing that we should see here is a little bit less obvious, okay? We have in our numerators a 5, 7, nothing really here. I mean, we have a 1 here, but then we have an 11, 13. Now, you can see that except for this 1, our numerator is increasing by 2 every time, okay? And you can kind of see that it would still be increasing by 2 every time if we change this 1 to a 9 over 9. Okay? If we make that adjustment, now we have a 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, which is perfect. Okay? We can represent that as a, well, this is going to be a little bit trickier here. Since this is increasing by 2 every time, we're going to represent that as 2n. Okay? Now, by, the, by itself, that would give us 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. But, since we're starting at 5, okay, let's just try to get our first term to be 5. Well, 2 times 1, that's going to be our n for, right, our first term will, get, will be 1. n equals 1. So, 2 times 1 is 2. How do you get to 5? You add 3. 2n plus 3. And you can see that that will work for our other numerators as well. Now this 9 in the denominator is not going to be a problem for us because now you can see here that we have another pattern here in the denominator. We have a 3, 9, 27, 81. Now there's no denominator here, but you can kind of see here that, that the only reason that is is because this is 3 to the 0 power. Okay, on the bottom, which is 1. So 5 is, is fine to say. This is 3 to the first power. We had a 9 on the bottom here. That's 3 to the second power. 27, that's three, 3 to the 3rd power, and 81, that's 3 to the 4th power, okay? So here we're going to have a 3 on the bottom, and that's going to be to the n power, but not to the n power because here we have a 3 to the 0 and not a 3 to the 1. So, well, this is 1 less than what it would be if, if we had 3 to the, oh, well, our, sorry, our power, okay, our power is 1 less than it would be if we had 3 to the n. So what we're going to do is subtract 1 here. Okay, And you can also combine this negative 1 and 3 in our final form and say that this is equal to 2n plus 3 times negative 1 third to the n minus 1. All right, and that's your sequence. So I think this would be one of the harder things that you got, you know, if if you had to do something like this on a test, uh, I definitely think the test will be more focused 
on on series and stuff like that but i think that you you might see a sequence question there you might have to find a formula so it's definitely good to go over this stuff all right so that's going to do it for this video so if this video helped you make sure to leave a like and subscribe by clicking my icon in the top left you can also view the playlist for sequences and series in the next video in the series Lastly, if these videos are really helping you and you would like to consider supporting me, I have my Patreon linked in the description down below, along with some other pretty cool links that you should definitely check out. See you soon!